This week I was supposed to get a video out on who stole the Empress, but something came up that I can't help but discuss immediately. You saw the thumbnail of this video so you know what the deal is. Let's get into it. In late January of this year, I made a video where I reviewed a comic, quote unquote, called My Beloved Streamer. In my video, I verbally destroyed this thing because the work quite literally was not an actual webcomic, but instead a comic that advertises porn to Webtoon's user base of minors. I spent that entire video thoroughly explaining the process by which this comic desperately tries to reel in the next adolescent sucker to squeeze money out of. The comic was a strip of three panels of actual artwork, then a massive Patreon advertisement that was longer than the actual intended strip story. It was pathetic. If you want to see that video, in case you haven't already, I'll put the link in the description if you really want to witness how embarrassing and desperate this garbage is. The usual process for me when it comes to these types of dilemmas is more or less what I just told you. I find something awful on Webtoon, I expose something awful on Webtoon, and then I just move on. And I figure that would be the case in this situation, as honestly, I didn't even remember making a video about this thing until this situation just came up. But that is not the case at all. A cancerous creation usually tends to be the byproduct of a cancerous human being. You see, the creator of My Beloved Streamer is some ass clown called Sayuri Winter on Webtoon Canvas, and also YouTube, pumping out dog shit comic dubs and animatics for her glorified porn advertisement she calls a webcomic. In the midst of uploading her own work on YouTube, I'm assuming she just stumbled into my own video where I expose it for being a vile, underhanded tool to scoop pocket change up on Patreon via advertising smut to teens. So, what was her response to me pointing out that her garbage work literally isn't allowed on Webtoon because the uploading policies and guidelines state that you are not allowed to post sexually gratifying content in any way, shape, or form? False copyright striking my YouTube videos, of course. Well, she tried to, anyway. And she failed. The video wasn't affected at all, and I actually received an email from YouTube's automated system telling me that they didn't find valid grounds for a copyright takedown in the argument that she presented to YouTube staff. Holy crap, YouTube actually helped me. They actually helped, dude. Uh, actually, one of my boys sat down and theorized that YouTube didn't actually help at all, and this Sayuri Winter idiot just didn't file the copyright strike correctly, and that's the only reason why the video wasn't taken down. But for once, just this once, I'll give YouTube the benefit of the doubt and say that they actually defended my ass. Holy shit, rare YouTube W. Now, like I said, the only reason why I even know this happened is because YouTube emailed me and informed me that there was an attempted copyright strike on my channel. And furthermore, they even gave me her personal statement and argument on why she thinks this false strike is valid to her delusional eyes. And her statement is like something of a mini essay, so let's take a look at it right now. This part isn't scripted, I'm just giving my gut reaction to this. Alright, dear YouTube, I, dear YouTube team, I appreciate your time. I must clarify that Blacklight Jack versus Webtoon's use of my comic does not fall under fair use laws. Alright, please explain to me why. Especially considering the negative impact it has had on my reputation. Okay, wow. Um, that's a loaded... Holy crap. Uh, give me a second to process this in my head so I can articulate it correctly. Okay. Especially considering the negative ha impact it had on your reputation? No, 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 honey. I didn't impact your reputation. I didn't tarnish your reputation. You tarnished your reputation. You don't want your public image to be defamed? Then don't sell porn to kids. Second of all, what the hell is that? How? You're saying especially considering the negative impact it had on you? How? I'm not understanding how that affects the grounds of fair use, but okay. Anyway, next sentence. Fair use is intended to protect transformative uses that do not harm the market or... No. No, that's not... No, that is, that is not fair use. Fair use is intended to protect transformative uses that do not harm the market for the original work and do not negatively affect the creator's reputation. Yeah, no. No. <laughs> no, that's, that is literally not what fair use is for. Fair use is not... Oh, hey, you're allowed to use this for transformative purposes until it makes me look But Yeah, no, that's, it, that, fair use is not invalid as soon as it makes you look bad. Fair use is fair use regardless of whether it shits on someone or praises someone. Period. The end. All right, let's continue. As a comic artist, creating and sharing my work is not just a livelihood, but a passion. Each piece represents- Okay, can you, can you go without this fucking anime protagonist monologue, please? Like, no one gives a shit. This does not- this has nothing to do with copyright. 
You see, the 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 the, the, the people who did the fake comic like was doing the exact same thing. They did this weird like borderline guilt trippy thing where they gave off their personal story like that has anything to do with legal grounds. Why did all these artists do this? When someone like Black Light Jack versus Webtoon takes it upon themselves to use my work without my permission, it undermines my integrity. It undermines the integrity of my creations and jeopardizes my ability to control how they are presented and perceived. It undermines it jeopardizes my ability to control how they are presented and perceived. You don't have control over that, and you, and you shouldn't have control over that at all. You goddamn... That's like dictator-type shit. It's like this idiot read the 1984 book and then thought that Big Brother was the good guy or some shit, dude. Anyway... I value creativity and the freedom of expression. Yeah, nothing's... Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, something... Uh, uh, actually, one more thing. It un um, Right here, it says it undermines the integrity of my creations. Yeah, your integrity of selling porn to kids. Yeah, very... Uh, so much integrity you have there. But yeah, I value creativity and the freedom of, of expression, but it must be done with respect for creators' rights and work. Also, it has come to my attention that not only have they used my comic without, not only have they used my comic without seeking my permission, which is something that I don't need to do, no one needs to do for anyone, but they have also monetized the video through Patreon, profiting from the content that pro portrays my work in a negative light and incites hate towards me. Yeah, I made a lot of money off you. Ha ha ha. You f trying my best not to use my swear words. <sighs> But yeah, I did that. And I'm again, I'm not understanding what that has to do with grounds for copyright striking my videos. Like, again, this is the fake drama all over again. Not actually having any fair grounds for copyright at all, and then kind of just complaining about how mean I was to them and how they're gaining something out of it. This is exactly what the fake creators did. Ah, uh, this is unacceptable pretty sure it is acceptable and further exacerbates the harm done to my reputation and livelihood as a comic artist okay first of all no it doesn't second of all i can do that all i freaking want the videos that i create are a transformative work and if that's also transformative then i also have free reign to put those on patreon and make money off of them i'm not understanding why that wouldn't be the case at all but you seem to think that um i'm not allowed to do that and yeah i can I must emphasize that this, that this does not fall under fair use. How? Fair use does not extend to using copyrighted material for commercial purposes, especially when it causes harm to the creative, creator's reputation. Their actions have caused a legal and ethical boundary, and I'm left with no choice but to request the removal of the video once and for all. Yeah, okay, wow. Uh, once again, let me just process this in my head correctly. Fair use does not extend to using copyrighted material for commercial purposes. Um, yes, it does. People use copyrighted material for commercial purposes all the fucking time. Granted, it's not like literal because and the way and the reason why they get away with it is because it's transformative. Like this idiot is kind of just using big words to make herself sound smart. <laughs> I can't, I, I like, that's the vibe I'm getting right now. The, the, this fool probably just like looked up Wikipedia for five seconds and then was like, oh, hey, see, this is thing that I guess makes sense. I'm going to put this in my copyright statement or whatever. Uh, and secondly, you think you're removing my video once and for all by giving up a false copyright strike? Yeah, that's not how it works. Let me actually tell you how the copyright system works. You see, you're going to false copyright strike the video. Then I am going to request an appeal for YouTube staff. After I request that appeal with while providing valid defense towards why you're not allowed to do this, YouTube is going to give you two weeks, only two weeks, 14 days, to, provi to provide a proof that you are going to um, sue me in court. That is, that is the process. If you do not ha provide any proof of taking legal action towards me in any way, shape, or form, then, well, my video is going to be restored on YouTube. That is how copyright strikes work on this platform. She doesn't know that, and she very evidently doesn't. <sighs> it's pretty sad. This is exactly what happened with plenty of my other videos that have been false copyright struck. Like, remember when my fucking, my main YouTube channel, Black Light Jack, the original one, got straight up jumped by Fujoshi's. Got like three copyright strikes and the entirety of September was a goddamn disaster. 
But yeah, there was that. And all those videos are restored now. So yeah, that's how that works. You just wait two weeks after you submit your appeal, and then the video's back. But yeah, this person's an idiot. Like, a real goddamn idiot. And I gotta say... After reading this, I can't help but get the vibe of a spoiled bratty bitch just demanding whatever she wants right now. Because her webtoon has not been taken down, and it definitely freaking should be taken down 100%. And despite that, she is still clearly under the impression of entitlement, as you can see in this statement. This effing girl has the nerve of posting 18 plus content on a 13 plus website, then thinking she's a victim when people point out that you should not be posting your slot there. Honestly, between this wacko and the creators of the fate, why is it that all of these people think that they're victims when people point out that their garbage is cancerous? I just don't get it. Because look, here's the deal. I've worked on a comic before, right? And I'm sure many of you viewers here also have as well. And the rub here is that when you work on a comic, you have to put a lot of... <clears throat> Time. You have to put a lot of time into illustrating and writing it, especially if you don't have a collaborator helping you, and when you're running solo, which many canvas creators are. The arduous process of paneling, sketching, line art, shading, dialogue, and even before all of that, making sure the story is properly paced and depicted appropriately, like... That entire process takes massive amounts of time. Within those wide spans of time, not once, not a single solitary time, did this sorry winter idiot look at the junk that she was working on and think, hey, wait, are literal porn advertisements allowed to be on display for an online comic website for teenagers? What I'm trying to say here is that this girl has to know what the fuck she's doing. This is deliberate. And honestly, it's vile. She knows she's advertising porn to minors for bits and change on Patreon. Which is pretty freaking funny because she seems to be personally upset about the fact that I've managed to make money off of commenting and criticizing her garbage and making money off of it via Patreon myself. All I'm doing at the end of the day is just paywalling the live reactions of my videos in their entirety because YouTube keeps blacklisting all of my freaking and full read-throughs. There's nothing illegal or underhanded about that. Selling porn to fucking kids most definitely is. At the end of some of these stories, there's a lesson you can learn from it. And in this webtoon story, I feel like the lesson that you, the viewer, can gather from this situation is simple. When you choose to create something on Webtoon Canvas, make sure it's an actual comic and not just pornography. And also make sure that your content in question is an actual story that is appropriate for Webtoon's upload guidelines. Uh, yeah, that sounds about right. Just make an actual comic when you draw on Webtoon. That's gonna be all for this video, boys. This is Blacklight Jack signing out. You guys have a good one. We've reached the end of the video, so it's time for the Patreon roll call. My $15 supporters are Ale Dragon and Stormy Knight. My $10 supporters are Agish, Art Blocked, Candid Monkey, Charlie Kieran, Daniel Ivy, Phydra Galaxy, Klutzy Ninja Kitty, May Soratami, Mighty Beware, Pi Yan, Pony Boy VA, Skyre, Sindrin7, and Vincent Lundy. And of course, let's not forget our $5 supporters. They are appreciated just as much as all the others. If you'd like to be in the credits as well, as well as have access to a small library of Patreon content, all you gotta do is support me on Patreon. Thanks for watching, boys. We'll see you next time.